Hello everybody, I'm Jeffrey Reynolds. Uh, I have another couple playlists uh, under the Reynolds Runabouts channel and I thought I'd do a video today of me running our uh, Woodland Mills made bark and branch and tree shredder and uh, we bought this because we had a bunch of uh, brush that we created every year with uh, the dying off of the ash in northern Michigan and we just got tired of burning uh, big bonfires ever found the right time of the year to do it and then uh, we started thinking harder about what we could do with chips for our garden and our for our landscaping around our small farm and we ended up uh, doing some research and ended up with the Woodland Mills brand um, shredder out of Canada Ontario specifically and I have nothing but great things to say about this thing day one we were using it and we shoved a six inch uh, must have been it was a dry branch went right through it if you stuck an eight in there it gets stuck but it's easy to get out there's so many uh, pieces of safety equipment on here that allow you to not only stay safe as a user but um, get things unjammed clear out the the turbine or the fan that throws the bark in uh, chips into a uh, nice pile for you so uh, I'm going to show you kind of a, a normal uh, shredding day for me and some of the things to avoid that I've discovered and hopefully you can uh, get the same satisfaction out of it of the Woodland Mills product that we did. The one thing with the Woodland Mills shredder is that it has an 8 inch opening and to do a good job you need to be able to make sure that that trunk is essentially just a trunk going through there so six inches or less and uh, this for instance it's a green poplar we cut you have to cut these branches off and then just run them through uh, the shredder on their own. You can't stick this whole thing in there. The, the, it's not the diameter that's the problem. This diameter will go through there. It's the branches because they get caught in the opening just before the, the, uh, the I guess you would call it a, a drawing uh, tool that is sucking it in like a wheel with uh, blades on it and while it'll pull it in you can't get the branches past that eight inch orifice so it it's going to get stuck and that's good because that way it won't overwhelm your uh, machine or the PTO and then obviously your tractor so some of the advice I'll give you right off the bat is to make sure you have all your brush cut nice and neat these are some pieces that I missed that I still have to get those ready here's uh, an example what I've been doing this morning, nice set of nice set of chips. Here's a kind of the diameter you're looking for. Very nice. If you want them to break down, these will break down really well too. I have a mix of ironwood, maple, cherry, elderberry, poplar, and ash in this pile. And I didn't have any trouble today. Green or green or um, dried out, it goes through pretty quick. The beauty of the Woodland Mills um, shredder is you can use wood chipper. This is the WC68 wood chipper. You can open up the orifice uh, drawing mechanism to take larger things. Um, I've got it set pretty tight right now because I have a lot of small branches. When I go to do the big stuff. I can open that orifice spring up and give it less tension and it'll take an 8 inch in there uh, easily. 6 is usually my limit, but eight it'll take 8. So let me show you uh, how it works. So I use a Kubota, it's the B2910 series, which is a perfect match for this mill. And all you have to do, you turn on the tractor and I still, you know, you have it low idle when you're doing it. You shift it into uh, the 540 rear PTO. Once it goes in there, I slowly draw up my throttle to the, there's a setting, PTO 1, and I'll set it to that slowly. And the machine isn't really running, in my opinion, that hard, but it really is perfect for shredding anything you want to stick in there and it's just a simple three-point hookup 
you have to do a little adjusting to the PTO. Um, every track is a little different, so we adjusted that slightly. But it's an easy on and off uh, three point that we, we park in our barn and I just pull up and 30 minutes later I'm working. A lot of it is not hooking it up as much as getting the tractor just perfect with it. But with your three point and with your arms that they swing a little bit, you can really get it on there easily. This uh, part swings up for storage. It's in the, it's in the down position for use. It has a really nice um, safety bar. So if you're in here and something goes wrong, <clears throat> it's a natural motion to hit that down and that'll shut it off. It has a neutral and you have to pull it out for the positive position or the drive position. And you can see that's the opening. It has these really nice plastic shields to keep the, if you want to call it, kickback. And then there's the um, wheel that draws the wood into the chipper. So right here is your grinding. It has a huge set of knives, and I'll show that to you later. And then it comes out the chute, which is adjustable. You can do, uh, well, it goes all the way around. Obviously, it'll hit the tractor if it's in the wrong position, and you don't ever want it um, any more than 45 degrees to where you're working, or 90 to be safe. And then you make a nice pile of chips and that's the product you want. So now I'll show you how to do that. Well, you're in luck in some ways. I, um, I just ran through some small, dry, somewhat rotten uh, ash, and that and uh, the fine pine needle ends of a white pine or even a, some firs, they'll get caught up in this turbine that are cutting it. And because there's not enough there to cut, it kind of gets bound up and then but this is this is how easy it is to fix it. There's one bolt right here that I'm going to take off, and this keeps it secure. And you pull that off. I've only had this happen a few times, so and this opens up. As you can see. close up here it just gets you know you got some good stuff but it's almost too fine to blow so it gets caught up so all you have to do is you open up that um, you know the chute and I what I do I just spin it and flip 
and before you know it, it's it's like a conveyor belt. It flips it all out, and then I can just put it back together and get back on to work. Here's a kind of an idea of what we're dealing. This is the business end of this shredder. It's these knives, and you get, I believe, two sets, and you can flip them, and then, of course, then you'd want to sharpen them. Um, as you can see, I've run a lot through there, and there's nothing that has nicked these blades. Um, and we've had this probably, I think it's a full year now we've used it for all sorts of wood. And uh, we just love it. So I'm going to clean this up, put the chute bag down, and get back to work. You can also get blockage in the chute itself. And it got caught up in here. So I just reached in there and I pushed it out. And then you can just pull it and clean and it's ready to go. What I love about this thing is that there's not anything that I can throw at it that I can't fix pretty quickly or um, just be careful the next time, like putting more than eight inches in that, you know, eight inch diameter log or something. This, you know, is just some, looks like some green, green poplar. So I might just take it a little bit easier. This was that big one I, sh I sh put through there for you. And uh, I think it's a really good idea to mix it. So think, uh, think green, uh, dry um, sticks, and then branches. You want to give it a little variety so it isn't just trying to chew up small branches. Stick a larger diameter uh, branch in there periodically and it'll help you know, keep the flow going with these bigger chips and it helps clean it out. So it's, it's, uh, it's a great machine as long as you just, you know, work with it and uh, it'll do the job for you. So now that I've got my pile and a brush done on this side, I'm gonna reposition my uh, shredder and show you how easy that is. You just move it to where you need the pile to go. And I have a nice pile going, so I'm just gonna move the tractor angle and put the mouth towards the, the other brush pile and then just continue to build my uh, pile of chips from there. You can see how easy it is to pick that uh, Woodland Mills chipper up. And when I get done today, I'll show you how I just put it on a pallet um, outside our pole barn. And it's a perfect fit on a pallet. It's nice and straight when you want to come back and pick it up for the next time. At the end of the day, I just put it on a couple two by fours under my lean to, and then uh, fold up the, you know, the chute that's used for loading the wood, and uh, undid the PTO and the three point hitch, and it'll wait till the next time we use it. Well, I hope you found the va the video valuable, and um, again, I can't say enough good about this Woodland Mills WC68 wood chipper. It does everything my family needs it to do in our woods. And I've shown you just about all it can do on a daily basis. And 
it's it's all good and i'm glad that we purchased it the one thing that i did have some issues with when it was delivered the shipper here in uh, northern michigan brought it on a semi and i had talked to the uh, this, the shipper after I had crossed the uh, Canadian border and made sure that they could drop it into a, you know, a driveway. They assured me that, yeah, they could do that. They did not. It showed up that day and they dropped it on our quiet country road, which is fine. And we had to drag it um, probably 600 feet on a really great pallet, steel pallet with runners. It worked out pretty well. But that's one thing I would check if you buy one Make sure that you have the guarantee from the shipper that it's gonna to go to a loading dock area where you can pick it up or you can get at it um, near your home because more than likely they'll put it on a curb like they did with us and then you've got to figure it out. So those are some of the things I would suggest following up on if I was to buy one of these. So thank you for tuning in. I hope you liked it and uh, 